Hey everyone, and welcome back to Joey's Retro Handhelds. I'm Joey, and today we're going to talk all about retro achievements and how to make the most of them. Now, retro achievements is exactly as the name implies. It is achievements for retro games and retro systems that you can earn through emulators using the website retroachievements.org. This is for older retro systems that never had any form of achievements. So NES, SNES, Genesis, all of the Game Boys, Dreamcast, and so on. There are a ton of supported systems. Tons of emulators have support for retro achievements, the most popular being RetroArch, of course, but also Dolphin, PCSX2, PPSSPP, and more. There are currently over 8,500 retro games with achievements in them. And this has been an awesome community for years where sets of achievements are made for retro games by approved users on the platform, and then you get to earn them after. So for example, I am playing Pokemon Fire Red right now, and you can see that on the site, there is a Pokemon Fire Red set of achievements, and you can read through to see what you need to do for each achievement. Some of them are really easy, like defeating your rival in the first Pokemon battle. And then some of them are hard or harder, like collecting every single Pokemon in the game. In reality, Fire Red is actually one of the easier sets of achievements, but you can imagine that some games get really difficult for collecting all of the achievements. Now, there are a ton of supported systems, everything up to and including PlayStation 2, that also includes GameCube, which was just added recently. And yeah, I said GameCube. You can earn retro achievements playing Super Mario Sunshine, Wind Waker, Twilight Princess, and all of the other big hitter GameCube games, as well as ROM hacks like the newly released Super Mario Eclipse. That also has a set of retro achievements already, which is really cool. And so everything from PlayStation 2 and GameCube on down. That means a lot of Pokemon ROM hacks, Super Mario World ROM hacks, Zelda, and so on. You can really see how things can get pretty wild and fun with this. Now I'm going to tackle a question that comes up every single time that I mention retro achievements inside of a video. There is always either one or a few commenters that are like, why? Why retro achievements? Why do you do this? What is the point? I don't get it. None of this. And they're mostly veiled trying to just stir up some controversy, but sometimes it's an actual legitimate question. Why use retro achievements at all if maybe you don't understand the reason why we do it? So here's my explanation for why I personally do it. I was around when retro games were current games. And so I remember growing up with NES, SNES, Game Boys, all of that sort of thing. Super Mario World was one of the first games I probably ever played. Pokemon Blue was one of the first games that I remember purchasing. Ocarina of Time was one of the first ones that I remember getting at Christmas and all of that sort of thing. Back then, you weren't able to get more than a few games a year. It just didn't exist. You didn't have all these free-to-play options. You didn't have all these game options. You would wait for a birthday or a Christmas or something like that and get super excited, put it on your list, and then get a game. And you would play the hell out of that game for months, years, whatever. It doesn't matter because you don't have a lot of options. So when you get Pokemon Blue, and that's your first game ever, you can imagine that I've put thousands of hours in Pokemon Blue at this point. I have done everything that you can do in that game. I have done it many different times. I've done whatever you can think of. Retro Achievements adds a new sort of challenge and option to it. It says, hey, here's a whole list of achievements that you can do now on your 400th playthrough of Pokemon Blue. This is something new. It is something that is an addition over a game that you've been playing for 25 years now and you get to experience something new and different. This even goes a little bit further because you learn things doing retro achievements. For example, in Pokemon Blue, did you know that there's a way to go through the entire Viridian Forest without encountering a single wild Pokemon? I had no idea. Due to the coding of the game, you can do a certain path and you don't get any wild Pokemon. And that is an actual achievement. Never would have known that if it wasn't for retro achievements. Another example, I was playing Wind Waker, had no idea that under grandma's house, there is a treasure chest there and a bunch of rupees. It doesn't make a difference for the game. It's not something you would ever care about, but it's a cool little addition that without retro achievements, I never would have known. I never would have went there. I never would have had to think about getting 
something that I didn't even know existed. So it's something like that for me. It is a combination between adding really cool achievements, really cool new additions to games that I've played countless times and now I have a new challenge to hit and also discovering new things in games that I thought I knew everything about. That is what makes retro achievements for me. Okay, so at this point you're like, Joey, it's enough. I've, I've heard it all, I've, I'm, I'm happy for you, but tell me how to do retro achievements. You had me at retro games and achievements. So let's talk about how to set it all up. First up, you need to create an account on retroachievements.org. And that part is really simple. You just head to the website and at the top right, you're gonna see a sign up option and go ahead and just create your username and password and all of that sort of thing. I would highly suggest that you remember your username and password because you're going to need it. Next up, you are going to need a device that can connect to the internet. So I have here an RG35XX SP and it is a Wi-Fi enabled device and that works. Most of the devices that I have around me and in my collection are all Wi-Fi enabled. It is harder for me to find a device that doesn't have Wi-Fi and you might realize in some of my reviews when a device doesn't have Wi-Fi, it's just not a fit for me. Retro Achievements is a main reason. You need to be connected to Retro Achievements server via Wi-Fi while you set up the game, while you play the game, all of that. There's workaround and hacks that people talk about, but I'm not gonna talk about those. For the purpose of today, you have to make sure you are always connected to Wi-Fi while you are playing to earn achievements. And so you need a Wi-Fi enabled device, whether it's a retro handheld or a PC or whatever it is, because there's a lot of different options. Now I have the SP here and it runs mostly RetroArch and RetroArch is one of the supported emulators for retro achievements, which is great, but doesn't have to be just this. On my ROG Ally X, you have Dolphin, you have PCSX2, you have PPSSPP, and all of those have retro achievement support. My Windows computer, of course, has all of the emulators, so you can do anything you want for retro achievements, Linux, and all of that sort of thing. So it doesn't really matter the operating system, mostly just the lowest barrier to entry is Wi-Fi and RetroArch. If you have those two things, you can start earning retro achievements on really anything. Now, once you have your username and password, it is different in every emulator, but you basically want to go into the emulator. And for RetroArch, let's say, it is settings, achievements, and you enable it. And all you have to do is log in with your password there. So you would put your username, you would put your password, and retro achievements is a little different. You have to back out and go and save current configuration. But either way, that is the basic idea for every emulator. Go into the settings, there's usually a retro achievements or achievements section. Put in your username, put in your password and log in, and then you're set for going forward to do retro achievements. If you want more in depth on each emulator, I have guides for every single emulator and I'll leave most of them in the description so you can check that out and see how to do it for every emulator, but it's pretty simple. If you just go and check in the settings, you'll find achievements and you can just log in there and it's easy. But the next part is where things get very tricky for people, and it's usually where the problems start. Let's go ahead and we're going to go back to the Fire Red Achievements page. You can find it easily using the search button at the top of the Retro Achievements website, and then when you navigate there, you can see all of the achievements that are available for Pokemon Fire Red. If you go ahead and click the title of the achievement, you can see some other commenters and basically some of them will have ideas of how to complete that achievement, maybe a guide, all of that sort of thing. But general ideas, you can see the list of achievements, how to do them, and that way you have a good idea. But let's talk about the right side of the page as that is more important to you as a new user. The first option is you can visit the forum topic of the game and you can see some general comments about the game, the set of achievements, and so on. It's a good resource if you want to see what others are saying about the list or maybe about the actual game and everything related to achievements. Sometimes there's a guide option below and that'll help you as a guide for any of the harder to earn achievements or just give you a general guide to earning achievements in the game if you want to follow something. But the option that we care about the most is supported game files. This is the most important to you. So with Retro Achievements, you have to have the supported game or ROM file for it to work and for it to recognize the game inside of the emulator. 
So for example, in your travels, you might have noticed that there are some games out there with different versions. You might see a revision one, revision two, revision three, or you might see version one, version two, version three, and all of that sort of thing. Pokemon Fire Red is one example of that. There is the Pokemon Fire Red original, and then there is a revision one as well. If we go ahead and take a look at the supported game files for Pokemon Fire Red, you're going to see here that it wants the original Pokemon Fire Red and not the revision one. So if you would have had that in your library of games, you would not be able to earn retro achievements and it just wouldn't work. So this is very important for finding the right files that you need to have. But it goes further than that. Let me use another example and we'll look at Wind Waker for GameCube. And if we head to the same page and check out the supported game files, the one that they want is the European version of Wind Waker, not the USA version, which I'm guessing a lot of people have. So you can see how this might trip up some people. You have to be very careful and go and check the supported game files and then make sure you grab the right one. This is the number one issue that I see people have with retro achievements and is usually the beginner or new user problem. And so avoid all of that. Just check the supported game files and make sure that you have the right one before even attempting this. Now, obviously the website does not host the games. They just tell you which version you need. However, for ROM hacks, they actually do provide the patch file for you to use. So let's take a look at a ROM hack now, and I'm gonna go to Pokemon Ash Gray, which is an awesome ROM hack for the Game Boy Advance. There is a specific version, 4.5.3, that it wants you to use, and it gives you the patch file right there to use. So you don't need to go search for it, you don't need to Google it, all of that sort of thing. You would download that patch file and patch it to the ROM, and then off you go. But the general point that I want to leave you with is make sure that you're checking supported game files before booting up a game to make sure that it works for your game. Okay, so at this point you have signed in to Retro Achievements in your emulator, whether it be RetroArch or Dolphin or PCSX2 or wherever, and you have the right game file. If you boot up the game, the easiest way to know that it worked would be to check the top left. And for every emulator, there is usually a pop-up Although for some of the retro handheld devices, it is sometimes text-based and at the bottom. But the general idea is somewhere, somehow, on screen, something's going to show to tell you either you have achievements working or you don't. RetroArch usually shows a nice graphic and it'll say the game name and it'll say you have X number of achievements unlocked. For Dolphin, it'll be in text and it'll say you have X out of X achievements worth X out of X points. For PCSX2 and PPSSPP, it's the same sort of idea. That is the first sign to know that you have the right game and achievements are working. The second way is opening the in-game emulator options, like RetroArch, and then scrolling down to achievements. And if you see the list of achievements there, then you know it's working correctly. If you see no achievements or any other thing besides achievements, you have the wrong file or you're not connected to the internet, or that specific game doesn't have achievements. So there's three different things you have to check for. There are of course still a lot of games that just don't have achievements yet. And the way to check is just go to the website, put in the game name, and then you can see on the page if it actually has achievements. And it's pretty simple to see. There'll be a list of achievements if there is. If there isn't, you'll see pretty much nothing and it'll say request a set or it'll say zero achievements worth zero points. So it's pretty obvious which games have achievements and which don't. And if it doesn't, then there's nothing much you can do besides requesting a set. And it just shows that you have interest and people have interest in somebody developing achievements for this set, basically. But anyways, back to actually playing the game. When you unlock an actual achievement, it's gonna show up in the same place that you saw the other text or the other pop-up, usually the top left and it'll show what achievement you unlocked and all that sort of thing. And then if you head back to that in-game menu and achievement section, you can see your progress towards certain achievements, see if you unlocked any, see what's still locked, see if there's any missable ones, which would be denoted by the brackets and brackets, and that shows that it's a missable achievement, so you might miss it during your normal playthrough. But the general idea is you don't have to go to the actual website if you don't want to. You can check it usually in the emulator. So I kind of want to leave you with the last point here. You want to double check three different things. The first is that you're connected to Wi-Fi, of course. The second, you have the supported game file. And the third, that the game actually has achievements. If you have all of those things right, 
then it'll work and you're off to the races and you can earn some retro achievements. But there is one last topic that I wanted to cover for today, and that is hardcore mode. You might have seen this while you were setting up your retro achievements login and password in the actual emulator. There is a section and it says enable hardcore mode or hardcore mode, and sometimes it is actually enabled by default. I never have this enabled, and I'm going to explain what it is just in case you do want it, but personally, I don't use it. As you likely noticed on the website, there are leaderboards, there's points, and there's all of that fun stuff to make this competitive for people that want to have that sort of experience. Personally, I like the fun aspect of this, but others might want to be a bit more competitive with earning achievements, and that's perfectly fine. Now, without hardcore mode enabled, you can use save states, you can use cheats, you can use rewind, you can pause, and you can do all sorts of things to help you earn achievements. And so naturally, for anybody that is competitive, it kind of takes the competitive part out of it by having those available. It removes the prestige for some people. So hardcore mode is exactly as it sounds. It disables all of that, and it doubles the points you earn, and it shows a different border on the website to show that you earn those achievements. So that means in hardcore mode, there are no save states, there are no cheats, there's no rewind, there's no pause, none of that. And so it is basically just like you were booting up the game on a normal retro system and playing through it and earning achievements. So it's kind of going to be up to you on if that's something that you want or don't want. And like I said, personally, I would have that disabled because I just want to have fun and softcore mode is more for me. But if you're somebody who wants a bigger challenge and more competitive, then you might want to do hardcore mode. Honestly, that is all I have today about retro achievements. Just want to share for the people that maybe didn't know about it or heard about it in some of my videos and just never looked into it too much to see how much fun it actually could be. And I would suggest just jumping in slowly. Just sign up, log in, and then have some fun as you play some games. And you can sort of see if it's something that you like or something you don't like. And that is perfectly fine. It could be for you and it could not be for you. But don't chastise people that it is for, because that just makes no sense. For everybody else, post in the comments as you go. I'd love to hear your experiences with retro achievements and if they've been for you and what you've been doing differently because of them. Don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow. Come join me on the Discord to talk all about retro achievements. Support me on Patreon if you like my stuff. And hope you all have a good one.